Hi there, grade eight. Welcome to science subject and our topic for this day is all about the law of inertia. So let us state what the law of inertia is. So in the law of inertia, it says that an object at rest remain at rest and the object in motion will continue to move in the same speed and in the same direction. So it will only change unless it is acted upon by the unbalanced force or external net force. So the Newton's first law talks about the tendency of the body to remain its present state of motion. So therefore, the two states of motions that are being mentioned in the first law are one which predicts the behavior of stationary objects and the second one, the, the one that predicts the behavior of the moving objects. So therefore, in the absence of this external force or unbalanced force, this object will remain what they, get, what they are doing. Like if the object is at rest, they will remain at rest. And if that object is in motion, they will remain moving. So in both cases, the body will try to prevent any changes in that state or in their acceleration. If the acceleration is zero, then we can say that the forces are balanced. Therefore, the object will be in their equilibrium. So what's the meaning of equilibrium? Actually, it is the summation of all forces. But this time, all of those forces acting on the object is considered to be zero. So therefore, two forms are there. One is called the static equilibrium, wherein the object is at rest, not moving. So therefore, all forces there acting on that object at rest is zero. And then the other one is the object in motion, with its constant velocity in the same direction. No forces acting to make it or to stop it, then therefore, the equilibrium is also zero or the net force. So, the zero. So, what is inertia? Inertia is the tendency of the body to try to resist changes in its states of motion. So, we can say that inertia is the force, it is the unbalanced force. And inertia has the ability to change the states of motion. If that object is at rest, inertia may start it. If the object is in motion, then inertia has the ability to stop that object from moving. So, to start and to stop the object, there is a need for that force. And that force is inertia. Like this man sitting on the couch, the man is uh, stationary, so therefore, the man is at rest. You can, only, uh, you can only make this man move if you ask him to stand up. Next. In this case, the red ball is, in mo is at rest, so therefore, once this uh, metal sheet move and heat on the glass, the glass will start to move and the ball will remain at rest. Like the coin with the use of the cup and pour with the water, putting the coin inside the cup without even holding it. Then, the following objects may also start uh, rolling down because the unbalanced force is, of course, the decline point. So in this case, the car is in motion and the one that stops the car from moving is because of the wall. Wall serves as the unbalanced force. And take note of the man. During the time that the car is in motion, the man is at rest. And when the car stops moving, the body of the man starts to move flying away from the car. In the same way, when the van hits, the moving van hits the car, the car serves as the unbalanced force that stops the van from moving. And look at the ladder on top of it. While the van is moving, this ladder is at rest. But when the van stops moving, the ladder starts to move. Same way with this, the reason why it is important to wear a seatbelt because whenever the car stops moving because of the impact, the body tends to move forward. So to protect yourself and avoid accident, there is somehow 
it is important for you to wear the seatbelt. In a bike, in a bicycle, is the same thing. There is or there are stopping and starting of motion. With the test tube, yes, of course, the paper or the rock tends to be the unbalanced force. So the tendency of the object to resist changes in its state of motion is always dependent on its mass. Inertia is a quantity which is solely dependent on mass. So what is this all about? If I have here two objects at rest and looking at the mass, figure A with a total of 34 kilograms and figure B with a total of 12 kilograms, I may say that figure A is uh, heavier than figure B. So in this case, for me to be able to start these two objects to move, I'll be needing a greater amount of inertia to push or to start figure A to move by pushing it. In the same way, since figure B is lighter than figure A, then I just need lesser amount of inertia. So therefore, the greater the mass, the greater the inertia that you'll be exerting. Inertia is the force. The lesser the mass, lesser is the inertia that you're going to apply to move or to start the object.